Welcome. In the last session, we have seen uh, impacts of climate change that are coastal and marine ecosystem. So now in this session, we are going to see the two more impacts that are uh, ocean acidification and hypoxia, that is deoxygenation. So now we'll see one by one. So what is the ocean acidification? So when the carbon dioxide is dissolved with the seawater, it forms the carbonic acid. Thereby, there is a decrease in pH of seawater. The entire process, we call it like a ocean acidification. And uh, moreover, it is a direct consequence of the uh, uh, excess human induced carbon dioxide concentrations in uh, atmosphere right and now if you see the ocean acidification is uh, uh, happening parallel happening in parallel with the two other impacts of climate change that are ocean warming and deoxygenation so deoxygenation is nothing but reduction in the uh, dissolved oxygen content in the seawater so when these three impacts are uh, occur simultaneously the combination of these three impacts we call like a deadly trio so when this deadly trio uh, occurred the impact of the combined impact of this deadly trio would be more severe than individual impacts, right? And present oceanic acidification occurs approximately 10 times faster than anything experienced during the last 300 million years. And it also uh, yeah, risks, uh, risks uh, it also reduces and risks the ability of ocean system to adapt the changes uh, in the ocean caused by global, uh, I mean, uh, climate change or increased. Uh, carbon dioxide concentration or whatever right and if you see the graph uh, this is a global uh, sea surface uh, ph change if you see the change in ph from time to time so how drastically the ph change is reducing that anomaly if you see that is reducing means uh, the P, uh, ph of sea water is uh, has been drastically reduced uh, from time to time 1900 to 2100 these are some projections and this is as of now so these are the some uh, important points that uh, uh, what is ocean acidification and how it is. And if you see some of the impacts, it, ocean acidification has a, a lot of potential uh, to change the marine ecosystems and also impacts many ocean related benefits to society such as uh, coastal production or provision for food and income like that. And it also um, impacts the marine species in terms of uh, species growth, reproduction, and uh, structural and functional changes in ecosystem. And it can pose the great threat to the food security, harm to the fishing industry, and reduce the natural ecosystem or coastal production. And they increase the risk of, because when there are uh, when there is a, a risk to this uh, uh, natural ecosystem or marine ecosystem, thereby there will be an increased risk of flooding or erosion in low-lying areas. Because all this uh, marine ecosystem protects the a coastline, a coastlines in the low-lying areas from the events called like a flooding or erosion, sea level rise and all, right? So, and moreover, for survival and production of these marine animals, generally, uh, these marine animals or organisms use mm -hmm. calcium carbonate from seawater uh, to, build, to build or to make their shells or skeleton, right? So, what will happen when the seawater become more acidic in nature, that seawater doesn't useful or unable to make these outer uh, uh, hard parts or outer shells or uh, their skeletons and moreover the seawater uh, since it's a more acidic in nature it dissolves already whatever existing shells or skeleton right so because of this uh, they will uh, they all marine animals are under uh, a threat for survival and protection and now if you see the ocean acidification is expected to cost the global economy more than 1 trillion per year by uh, 2100 so despite there's a, there is a great risk. Some of the um, places like uh, uh, small islands or low income coastal areas have no infrastructure in a place to monitor this kind of uh, issues, right? And one of, one, one of the important uh, uh, impact of this ocean acidification, I can say, uh, the corals. If, if, uh, that you might have seen some colorful, uh, uh, this kind of uh, group of species under the bottom of sea. In your discovery channel and all so that we call generally in a coral is nothing but actually a marine benthic animal uh, that lives in the bottom of ocean so they are in a symbiotic relation with uh, uh, protosthetic algae that is a zooxanthellina so this is one of the important uh, impact of ocean acidification that is coral bleaching so as i said the coral is a marine benthic animal so generally in which actually it depends on the uh, uh, photosynthetic algae called zooxanthellina for food Generally, the photosynthetic algae, zooxanthellina, lives in the coral tissues to provide the food by the process called the uh, by by the process called the photosynthesis. So, 
you have to understand that duxanthellina is a photosynthetic algae it lives in the tissues of corals and uh, the duxanthellina duxanthellin uh, prepares the food by the process of uh, photosynthesis photosynthesis right thereby you can get the uh, i mean the corals can get the food so whenever the possible uh, conditions uh, are not in not there in the uh, ocean water like uh, sufficient sunlight or sufficient warming so then automatically the photosynthetic algae zooxanthellina will expel uh, from the tissues of the coral thereby there will be no food at all for the coral so corals will be um, uh, starving thereby uh, and can and can sustain for a, a while like one week or 10 days then if still that uh, photosynthetic algae uh, do not enter into their tissues to prepare for food uh, prepare food for them then eventually they will die so this is entire process we call generally coral bleaching because of this uh, excess ocean warming and ocean acidification there is no more the zooxanthellae or photosynthetic algae in the tissues uh, are staying there because of this uh, non favorable conditions in the ocean water so they are expelling uh, that corals coral polyps then thereby corals will be like starving continuously and then eventually they are dying the process we call like a coral bleaching right so when the coral got uh, died or coral got bleached that you can see in this images like uh, white in color so this is the process called a coral bleaching so there are uh, massive coral bleaching events occurred that we can see now and moreover why have to worry about the coral uh, and coral bleaching events and all this is one of the highest bio biodiversity of any ecosystem uh, globally and provides goods and services uh, with a value of at least uh, 30 billion dollars for a year and moreover supports at least 500 million people worldwide okay and this is one of the as of now because of this impacts of global climate change this is one of the most threatened ecosystem on the earth largely due to climate change or whatever because of increasing glo uh, global warming oceans ocean warming and acidification and combined effect like that and according to the uh, un uh, unesco the coral reefs in uh, all 29 reefs containing uh, old heritage sites would cease to exist by the end of this century so you, you how much impact is the ocean acidification and uh, uh, ocean warming uh, uh, impact on this coral reefs or coral reef sites and all you can see it's going to be the 29 reef containing old heritage old heritage sites are, are going to be seized by the end of uh, uh, this century if you continue the uh, emissions like this right and of course uh, there are a lot of coral diseases in southern southeastern florida in 2014 and widespread mass bleaching events of the great uh, great barrier reef in the australia and see uh, this kind of massive massive bleaching events occurred in, uh, in 2000, uh, 1998 2000 2002 2016 17 2022 and now recently in 2022 under the lanina conditions as well and nearly 60% of the individual reefs coral dot uh, coral had bleached by the uh, i mean coral coral got bleached by this ocean warming and ocean acidification events this is a, a, a report from the great barrier reef marine park authority so in that in this process i mean how the climate change impact the cor corals and all what are the possible uh, i mean i mean favorable conditions to um, uh, sustain the corals in a marine water and all you can see in this from image in a clear detailed manner right this is one instance of a coral bleaching at a scott reef in april 2016 okay there is a possible impacts then what kind of remedial measures that we have to take to control all this so ocean acidification international reference a uh, user group oar rg examines generally in detail types of data and analysis and products that are useful to managers policy advisors decision makers and politicians and to ensure that appropriate format and distribution pathways to control all this and sustainable management of course conservation restoration of this ocean everything is needed mm -hmm. otherwise uh, yeah, the effects will be more severe so at the iucn all conservation a uh, congress 2016 the icn members approved that resolution calling uh, for the protection of 30% of the planet's ocean by 2030 so these are the uh, agreements commitments that we have to take to control this impacts of this ocean acidification and warming and combined effect like that so uh, of course there is a this is a common uh, remedy that we have to follow for every impact of climate change that we have to reduce the average global average temperatures to well below the 
well below two degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial levels. Uh, in, in uh, of course, according to this Paris Agreement, and investment should also come with uh, should also support for research at the frontiers of biology to generate uh, genetic sel selection of this heat resistant corals. It means now the corals are unable to uh, sustain in the heat uh, more heat. When there is a more heat, the coral will not sustain in that. So we have to increase the scientists for the biology and all to create the gen genetic selection of the heat resistant corals so that can that can withstand uh, with the rising temperatures rising global temperatures and all right so if you see this this is the some statistics from the ipcc like uh, coral reefs uh, when there is increase in temperature of 1.5 degrees celsius what will be the impact and similarly 2 degrees and similarly 3 and 1.5 or uh, versus 2 degrees what would be the impact and all you can see right and coming to the another process called impact of climate change uh, called like hypoxia. So this is the deoxygenation. As I said uh, before that uh, this is a process, uh, deoxygenation is a process in which a reduction of the dissolved oxygen content in the ocean. So it is primarily caused by the ocean warming and eutrophication. Eutrophication is nothing but excess growth of the algae. So when there is a huge amount of the nutrients that we are releasing from the course because of so-called frost and all, when there is a huge nutrient, uh, that uh, there will be a huge production, biomass production, right? So this huge uh, production and the ocean warming uh, combinedly forms the process called like a oxygen uh, reduction in the dissolved oxygen content in the ocean. That's what we call like ocean deoxygenation, right? You can see. So the, why we have to study? Because even small reductions in the dissolved oxygen levels in the ocean can trigger the oxygen stress in a marine life by losing the adequate supply of oxygen at a tissue level. This process, that's why we call it like hypoxia. We also name these, uh, wherever these low oxygen levels in the ocean, those zones we call like ocean dead zones or oxygen minimum zones we call. And worldwide, the oceans have lost about 2% of the dissolved oxygen since 1950. And it is expected to raise uh, that same loss of oxygen, two to uh, three to four percent uh, by 2100. So most of the oxygen loss in the oceans, uh, oxygen loss in the ocean concentrated within the upper uh, thousand meters, where are the uh, species uh, uh, abundance is very high, right? So these are the possible uh, uh, points that we can say deoxygenation is happening in the ocean. So what kind of impacts that we get? If you see. So, so far, uh, this uh, this image or tells you that how much amount of the oxygen got reduced. What are the possible reasons uh, that deoxygenation is? Uh, what are the possible causes that create the deoxygenation in the oceans, like ocean warming, stratification, cultural eutrophication, enhanced eutrophication? That's all. Uh, this kind of process will uh, form the deoxygenation. So, stratification is nothing but uh, uh, I mean. Uh, uh, reduction in the ventilation process. If you see last image, so they reduce deep ventilation. There is no, uh, when the, the stratification is uh, increased, there is no uh, uh, sufficient or strong mixing, thereby there, you cannot get uh, surface oxygen rich water doesn't mix with the deep water. That's why there is a reduced ventilation because of the enhanced stratification and all. So these possible reasons cause the deoxygenation in the seawater, right? And now if you see, the ocean represents around 97% of the physical habitat, habitable space on the planet. So we have to take care of it like uh, to protect mostly on the marine life in the ocean, right? So of course we know that loss of oxygen from the ocean will have severe impacts on the marine biodiversity and uh, functioning of ocean ecosystem. And uh, uh, if the deoxygenation process has started to alter the balance of marine life, means uh, kind of uh, uh, whatever uh, mar I mean, uh, um, what I can say, hypoxy hypoxia tolerant species that that can, means a kind of species that can tolerate even low oxygen uh, waters as well, like uh, such as the microbes, jellyfish, and some skid. And at the expense of uh, hypoxia sensitive ones, means the species which cannot tolerate in the low oxygen uh, water. Okay, the water where you can see the very low oxygen content. So there, there this kind of animals like uh, uh, tuna, marlin, uh, swordfish, and sharks, these kind of species cannot tolerate in the low oxygen content of the ocean water. So this kind of alterations are going on uh, by the process of uh, this deoxygenation. 
and the degraded habits can lead to the reduced catch for the fishes fisheries and uh, thereby you can see some regional stocks are likely to collapse so where there is a there is a less in the fish catching and all the regional stocks obviously so called reasons of uh, there is likely to collapse because it changes the effects are like that much impact and this change in the distribution of fishes can also uh, significant uh, negative socio economic and health impacts right so when there is a change in the distribution of fishes and all that definitely there will uh, there is a adverse effect on all uh, that a local or regional uh, community and fisheries uh, whatever uh, impacts so they, it, it, this kind of it can create the negative socio economic and health impacts so this much impact is going to be created by the process called this ox deoxygenation so and it also influences the movement of the gases between the ocean and the atmosphere so because of the there this is a reduction in the gases of the ocean so there is a so thereby you can see the some different uh, movement of the gases between the ocean and the atmosphere as well if if it is uh, increase a lot and lot so these are some of the sites where the coastal hypoxy uh, where the ocean oxygen dissolved oxygen is less than 2 mg per liter if you see some of that dark dark uh, indicates the coastal hypoxic sites and uh, some blue and black indicates the accordingly the oxygen reduction from the liter if the oxygen see blue light blue when the oxygen is less than 2 mg per liter and uh, medium blue when oxygen is 0. Point, less than 0.7 mg per liter similarly a uh, black uh, oxygen is less than 0.07 mg per liter so these are the some uh, coastal and uh, open ocean regions where you can see oxygen reductions oxygen contained dissolved oxygen contained in the oceans are very less and we have to see what we have to do that so of course people industries governments everybody uh, must reduce the carbon dioxide emissions and marine nutrient pollution because as i said before so for this deoxygenation one of the main reasons ocean warming but also the excess nutrient uh, 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 releases from the coastal regions uh, releases releases into the coastal regions from so called industries or whatever so we have to control those uh, uh, carbon dioxide uh, emissions and all and nutrient uh, marine nutrient pollution right as to reduce the oxygen loss and of course uh, nutrients uh, emitted from the uh, say like uh, uh, agriculture from uh, 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 treated and untreated wastewater uh, to uh, means the, from these fields like agriculture from all the treated and untreated wastewater the nutrients are going to be like a major contribute to the oxygen depletion in coastal waters right by the, by enhancing as i told like enhancing the water like with the rich uh, nutrients right so and of course some of the solutions to reduce the nutrient runoff like uh, effective nutrient reduction strategies include including introducing the legislation to limit we have to set some kind of limits to release the uh, nutrients into the coastal regions from so called industries like agriculture whatever and we have to set some specific goals and uh, we have to put some monitoring uh, uh technology to identify these problems and all so and of course uh, this is the largest oxygen loss observed at the depth of around uh, 100 to 300 meters uh, in the tropical and north pacific southern arctic and the south atlantic oceans right so in such a way we can reduce somehow and control this uh, deoxygenation process in the uh, oceans by uh, as an impact of uh, as an sorry as an impact of climate change right 